Hi, my name is Yip Feng. I am 25 years old this year. I'm a full-time student in NUS, but in my free time, I work here part-time with Dexter in Synergy Motor Works, and we specialize in restoring old cars from the 80s and 90s. This is my 1989 uh, FC RX-7. This is my daily. When I bought the car, it was wide-bodied and there was a massive GT wing. That wasn't my style because I tend to like cars a bit OEM plus and I wanted to restore the car to its former glory but what I didn't count on was how many things were already broken on the car so I remember fixing the power steering pump and then I started fixing the aircon and one thing led to another and I, one day I just got enough of it and I just rage quit and I just started pulling everything out of the car so what we ended up was a bare shell without any wiring, no engine, nothing and no interior at all and we started from there, again, from scratch. All the interior bits have been replaced. All the wiring loom is brand new. The engine has new rotors, new rotor housing. If you open up the engine bay, you would see the original air box, you would see the original stickers. So cars from this era, about the 80s and 90s, the parts are running low for most cars. But I got lucky because Mazda is a pretty good company and they announced a heritage program for the RX-7s and the Miatas. They started reproducing brand new engine parts, brand new interior parts. I managed to buy a lot of things brand new. The seals when I repainted the car, the engine parts, the rotor, the rotor housing, a lot of the wear and tear, I could replace it. I will remember when I was working on the car, I would end up working like 10, 11 o'clock at night and what I do when I get home, was to have to read through all the old Japanese manuals. None of them were translated. The American cars were very different from the Japanese cars. So I was watching YouTube videos in English and trying to figure out what the difference was between the Japanese cars and the US cars. We all grew up in the early 2000s and there was the era of Initial D. And I still remember the, the scenes of the A Bali battling the FCRX7. And these were cars that, you know, when you grew up with, they become really associated with your what you what you like and what you look look up to. So when this car came up on sale, I had sort of had a vision for it. Um, it had to be sort of like the spec of the FC that was in the movie. And so you could see the stickers here. It's not something I would run forever, but it's sort of a phase I have to get through because it was my childhood dream. So this is a fully unlocked car and you are the only one in control. So the little adjustments you make really trains you to become a better driver. How the braking is, you have to modulate your own braking because there's no ABS. So I think that's what I really enjoy about this car, uh, training myself to be a better driver. The only dislike I can think of about the car isn't particularly just specific to the FC, but owning an 80s car in general. You have to put up with 80s car things like how you have to turn off the aircon in the jam so the car won't overheat. Your interior panels will always rattle because that is 30 years old by now. But these are things, small little things you will forget quickly when you get into the car and just drive. You just enjoy the shifts and when you put your foot to the pedal, it's such a special feeling when you get the car. I think if you're looking at owning a car, car from this era, um, the most important thing I would recommend is to try and work on the car yourself because everything is so analog, it's so mechanical. You don't have to worry about coding or electronic gizmos that newer cars have to. When everything is so mechanical, you're picking up a screwdriver, you're picking up an Allen key, you're picking up a socket, and you're actually just you know fixing things very naturally and just be a little bit more resourceful, talk to more people, talk to people overseas. They're usually willing to help because these kind of old cars, you need to tap on the community and the camaraderie to keep these cars alive and keep the passion alive. Thanks for listening to me share about my car and my journey. And I hope that when you guys get an opportunity, buy an older car, you know, just take a chance, take a chance on them save them, um, experience them, and you really enjoy the process.